If you made it so far and you're still here, just give yourself a pat in the back. Um, remember that I'm always here to help. I keep um, advising you to leave a comment. Any questions, anything that you, uh, any doubts, just let me know. And just let me know your Scratch username. That way I can see what's inside and how have you been doing so far. All right, so for this week, we have the wall sensing lesson. Um, never mind these videos. I'm going to replace these as soon as I get this video edited and out. So let's uh, let's get going to Scratch then. Now the last thing that I did um, is here still. I may have done one slight movement and that would have been changing the sound on the hand clap because it was a little too loud. So softer now. So that way it's just not that bothersome. That might may be something to consider. So now we'll teach the cat that it cannot go through these walls here. These are off limits and right now it can just go right through them. And so this is where we're going to uh, be careful about how we do this. Now we are going to use a conditional statement an if and then and so we are going to go to the control blocks and look for the if and then block which is one two three four five it's a fourth one that we need this one right here and we're going to test it out on this one just because it's sitting out here and there's a lot of space to work down this way. Um, so it's the if and then it has this little eye. It looks like a little T-Rex type of skull with a little eye. The if and then. And so we're going to insert another block in there. So let's put that in there. We're going to insert the sensing block, the, the color touching color block. This one right here. We're going to put it in the T-Rex eye. This one goes in there. And um, here's the tricky part. So if you click inside here, you get a color picker. Now it's not showing it. I don't know why, but the color picker should have come up, not the hand. But you see, when I move the hand around, I have activated it. So if I move my hand around, it changes according to the color that the hand is on right now. And so I want to touch the color of the maze, and I'm going to touch a part of the cat. So let's try the skin or the, the fur on the cat. So you see how I have the fur and the color of my maze here? This is going to be important, so make sure you have that. Now, nothing happens still nothing's going on yet if the color of the cat's fur touches the color of the maze walls um, we should make it do something and at the moment nothing's happening so what should we do then so doesn't it make sense that if you're pointing to negative 90 direction which is which is left we're dealing with the left um, that if you touch that then point Let's say, let's say uh, to tell it to point the opposite direction of left, which is right, which is which is 90. Just make sure that it's 90 right there, see? And move back 10 steps. That way, it won't be able to go through. So let's see. We're going to click left. See? It just turns around. It doesn't want to go through there. Now, remember that I told you that our cat might be a little bit too big for this maze? Because this is when we start shrinking it. So here we go. I'm going to shrink it to the appropriate size. Okay. It still can go through that wall up there, but it can't go through on the left side because we told it not to go through there so we've done that side we're gonna be careful now how we duplicate and copy and paste these now because you just can't you gotta be careful what you're copying and pasting you gotta know what you're coding here so this is still good if the cat color touches the color of the wall um, point the opposite direction from which you started which is 180 so what's the opposite of down the opposite of down is up so that's why you gotta be careful. All right, so let's do another one. Um, let's see if I'm going to copy this one. I'm just gonna paste it here. I'm gonna change it just so that way I have done this. I missed it. Copy and paste. Let's put them back, but we need to fix this. This one is done. We need to fix this one. If the color of the cat's fur is touching the color of the maze, I want you to point the opposite direction from which you started, which was 90. So now it's going to be negative 90. So right, left. And the same thing here. If you touch, if the cat touches the color of the maze, go the opposite direction of what you started with, which was up. So now you want to go down. Okay, so now you can check. Check and see that the cat doesn't go through, or your sprite doesn't go through um, the maze. It's kind of lagging a little bit. I don't know why. It might be, let's see, it might be this 0 0.1 here. 
Maybe I need to change that to, let's see, a zero. That's, uh, let's see what happens now. Let's click on the green flag to activate it. A little bit better than moving this way. Yeah, so the more we add to it, the, la it, the more it lags. So try not to add too many blocks to your string. All right, so we have a string. We have four strings. We have, uh, st those strings have a conditional here. And so that's it for me right here. Look, I'm done. So just to help you out, if you're having problems with this, you can change the colors of your character to make sure you have a color that is a lot. Make sure that the color is a lot, like the color of his fur is all over the cat. So let's say you want to touch the black on his outline and have that be the cat's color. Um, that's going to be a difficult one. You don't want to do that. Don't do white either because white is everywhere here on this screen. So if white touches that, then it's just not going to go anywhere. Anyway, um, I hope it works for you. Again, this is uh, five minutes of um, something that takes a while to do. So click, uh, just, you know, pause it whenever you can. Um, just pause that button so much that it will fall off. Um, yeah. So let me know how it goes.